Howdy, howdy, and welcome back to another Works Up Wednesday. This week's edition is a getting started edition. So it's for those of you who are just starting out, and today's topic, we're going to talk about the ABCs of using UTMs in GA4. You're going to want to use these, and you're going to want to structure these properly. We're actually going to show you some tips and techniques uh, all in this workshop. Before we go too far into this, of course, welcome. If this is your first Workshop Wednesday, my name is Chris Mercer. Everybody calls me Mercer. You should as well. I am the co-founder of a company called MeasurementMarketing.io. And whether you found us through some of the podcasts or the talks that we give, maybe you're already a member of uh, other platforms like CXL Institute or Digital Market or Measure Summit or Social Media Examiner. Uh, you've probably seen some of our courses back there. But of course, we don't give all of our courses out. Those are over at MeasurementMarketing.io and really dedicated to those of you who are really, really, really wanting to build measurement muscle for your own organization. So whether you are a free member or a uh, paying member over at measurementmarketing.io as part of the Measurement Marketing Academy, we are happy that you're here. Welcome. It's our job to help people just like you learn how to use all these tools. And in particular with GA4, because it is the new kid on the block, there is some confusion around, uh, you know, how do we set up tracking on one side and measurement on the other side? And UTMs are a little different. In fact, there's new ones. So I'm not going to, it's a spoiler alert. There are new UTMs, but I'm not telling you what they are. So I guess it's not a spoiler alert. Maybe that's just foreshadowing. Of course, we do have the Measure Marketing Academy I mentioned that earlier. This is our flagship training program. So if you are uh, absolutely dedicated and ready to build measurement skills, we've got instructors back there. Uh, just about every course you could possibly want back there when it comes to digital measurement, analytics, tag managers, data studio, strategy, and beyond. There's about 25, 26, 27 courses now at this point. Um, you know, hundreds of workshops, the instructor team that's back there, actual live people who can help you out with this stuff. That's what they're there for. So that is the Measure Marketing Academy. Uh, we'll talk more about that at the end. Of course, with this workshop, you focus on one thing. Now, I'm going to give you a couple just to sort of pre-frame this a little bit. One is if you've never heard of UTMs, pay attention to what's there and how just sort of how they're defined. And that would be your one thing. Get started on UTMs. Now, if you have been using UTMs, if you have been using UTMs, and I'm going to preface this by saying you have not seen one of our UTM trainings before, um, it is likely, not guaranteed, but it is likely that you are not structuring your UTMs properly and you're not able to get all of these different questions answered that you're trying to answer because that structure is off. So we're going to talk about that today uh, as well. So it's a couple things to keep an eye out for. So again, even if you have been using UTMs, but you just maybe aren't sure on the structure or what, if you're not even sure what that means, that's okay. So we're going to cover that in this workshop Wednesday. All right, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Getting started, the ABCs of using UTMs in GA4. Now, of course, we're gonna go ahead and dive right in with the framework we plan, we build, we launch. The measurement framework is important. You must have one in the organization. You can absolutely use ours. It works swimmingly well. We use it all the time. It is three simple steps, plan, build, and launch. The reason that those steps are there is because we wanna move from marketing in the blind where we're doing a lot of guesswork and there's a lot of drama about what actions we should take and everything else. And we wanna to get to a point where just using measurement produces revenue and profits, right? That's what we want. So how do we do that? Again, plan, build, and launch. But the secret isn't how we do that. So planning is asking results and how questions. Then we gather the information needed to get answers to those questions. Some of the information you're gonna to wanna to gather and why today's training matters uh, when it comes to this framework is your UTMs are how you gather some information to answer questions specifically around traffic and where traffic's coming from. So pay attention for that. Then of course we think about the actions we're gonna take based upon the answers we get. Then we move into the build. You set up your results in GA4B conversion events. Then you make sure your traffic is identified. Again, this is where UTMs are so important. Not only using them, but structuring them properly so they what? So they tell a natural story of which traffic is causing which result, right? That's sort of what the goal of that is. Then you launch your system. Now that you've got the whole thing built out, you, you use it. You basically listen to the conversation that's happening between the users and the website and make sure it's the conversation you wanna have. You're finding your trends and patterns. We then use those trends and patterns to forecast our near future, right? Based upon our recent past, we can say, well, here's more likely how the behaviors should be. And we start asking the most powerful question in the world, which is, is this working like it is supposed to? And then you measure against your forecast Forecasts, and that's what will tell you where to optimize. The optimization thing actually becomes really simple because it's going to tell you this is the part you need to focus your limited resources to get the most bang for the buck. In other words, to move the needle. And ultimately, that means growing revenue and profits. So that's how the measurement marketing framework works. And we highly recommend that, again, if you don't, if you don't have a measurement framework in your own organization, use this one. 
If you have this one, you want to improve it from there or adjust it to your own liking, go for it. But this one works really, really well. So I heavily encourage you to take advantage of that. All right. Now we will go ahead and bring on our guest instructor, Julie Brade, and she's going to take us through the rest of these UTMs, what they are. She's got a nice little slide set out. So without further ado, take it away, Julie Brade. Thank you so much for that introduction, Mercer. Let's go ahead and start with the common questions we get about UTMs. And the very first one that you might already be trying to think through too is what does UTM stand for? And unless you already knew this, there's probably zero chance this would have been one of your guesses. Actually stands for Urchin Tracking Module. So a little history lesson for you, Urchin is what some people consider Google Analytics One. It was the company uh, that Google eventually bought. Um, and then you obviously know that we are now on Google Analytics Four. And so they just kind of kept this system that Urchin had for um, the UTMs. And so that's kind of just stuck through over the years. So that's um, a little trivia for you. So what are UTMs? That's another very common question we get. And they're simply the parameters that you add to the end of a link to your site. So um, it's not for internal links, like if you're having a blog page and you know sending traffic over to your sales page or something, you wouldn't put UTMs on that. But if you have an ad or an email or something, um, you would put a UTM on those. It's only for external traffic going into your site, nothing for internal links. Um, so this is an example of a link without any sort of parameter or UTM. Obviously, it's our homepage. And this is what it could look like if we were to put um, three of the eight UTMs on there. So this is an example of a source, the medium, and the campaign. And then the other pieces that you see here is the values of those different mediums. And obviously we kept it really simple with saying test source, test medium, and test campaign. So if we break that down a little bit easier to read um, and separate them, this is uh, another way of looking at that. And one quick note is this whole UTM system uh, looks for a very specific format for these different parameters, these different UTMs. And so UTM underscore source is the format it has to be. If you did, you know, source equals um, Facebook or something like that, it would the system would not recognize it as part of this traffic UTM. Um, it would have to be UTM underscore source. So the format of this in the system is very specific, um, but we'll talk more about that as we go through. So for example, um, if you did have Facebook as your source and then maybe your medium could be CPC for paid traffic. And then finally your campaign could be something like Academy, like we have our measurement marketing Academy. And that is how you can really help tell the story of where this traffic is coming from. Um, so if we take that back to making it look like a simple link, this is kind of what it looks like again. And then there is the highlighted UTMs again, just to kind of make it uh, so you can see all the different parts and pieces. I'm going to actually go back one more time so you can see that's what the link looks like. And then when we highlight all the different parts and pieces, now you can really t see the story that it's trying to tell. So what are UTMs used for? So very simply, it is tagging traffic. You hear that a lot, tagging traffic. Um, and it could also be say, said that identifying where the traffic is coming from. Um, so a very, another simple way of saying that is understanding what's working, what's not, uh, the results and how you hear us say that a lot. Um, but it's basically giving your system, whether it's Google Analytics or something else, uh, a signal saying, w telling them where the traffic is coming from and what that traffic is supposed to be doing um, and uh, all of that other information that we can put into the UTMs. So you've already seen three of these UTMs, but what are the rest? And so you know about UTM source, you know about UTM medium and UTM campaign, but there's also term, content, the source platform, creative format and marketing tactic. The first five we've actually had for quite some time, years. Um, the last three are actually very, very new and uh, kind of came out uh, f kind of for GA4, but also very uh, useful for um, Google Ads and those other type of platforms. So we're, uh, there's lots of information that we can use with these. 
So let's dive into what the UTM source can be. You already kind of saw us use it for Facebook, and but the way that we like to think of the source is it's the brand. And so that could be like Google, Facebook. If you have email, it could be stuff like Infusionsoft or Active Campaign. So the UTM's source is the brand. So just keep it nice and simple. Uh, going on to the medium, this is where you're going to talk about the type of traffic. So that means, like, is it a CPC or is it a share? So thinking of Facebook, um, is it meaning you'd be able to identify if it's paid or if it's share? Or some people use the word social instead of share. Same thing with email. You would be able to identify your email traffic against you know any of your pay traffic or any other type of traffic so the medium is the type the campaign is a little bit different because it's going to be for your product or service and so that where for in our example of the measure marketing academy we have your academy you have toolbox certification boot camps you have all of these different options um, and those are the products or services that we offer. If you have more of an e-com site, yours might be a little bit more different. It might be more of the categories, um, or maybe if there's a specific brand of product you're using, um, not the brand of the tool, like we mentioned Facebook, Google, or anything like that. But if it's a, like, let's say your Chewy, the Chewy.com, and you have, maybe you're sending out an email for Blue Buffalo dog food, and Blue Buffalo could be the product or service. So there's lots of different ways you could do this, um, but the campaign is the product or service. Now, term is a little bit easier, um, is the subject or the headline. And so if you're thinking of, you know, again, paid ads or shares um, that you're using on social media or your emails, uh, pretty simple, you know, welcome to the academy or free tools inside. Um, and you notice we've actually separated these by hyphens because it's going to make it a whole lot easier to read inside your platforms, um, including Google Analytics 4 and keeping everything lowercase actually makes it a whole lot easier to read as well. So it's just a fun pro tip there for you. Next content. Um, this is the one where in the past it's always been the differentiator and like before we had the three new UTMs, we'd kind of put a lot of that stuff in there. But content, it's still the differentiator where we can kind of identify possibly what audience we're targeting or what email campaign that we're using in the sequence that it's in and the email that it's in and or possibly what paragraph it's in. So um, that's what that one, two, three, four, five, hyphen three, hyphen five. We're able to identify the very specific email campaign and sequence and everything that is in and underneath our content. Same thing with, you know, deciding uh, or differentiating between a, a puppy image or a kitten video and with, in terms of ads or social media shares and stuff like that. This is the one that's always kind of like, if you can't fit in any of the other four, put it in here. However, now that we have some new ones, we're able to kind of spread that out and keep content a little bit cleaner. So source platform is um, again one of the new ones and it's all about the platform so different from the brand when we talk about source but the platform could be things like search ads 360 display video 360 etc so um, again it's very google ads centric that's kind of what they created these for but you can definitely utilize them in other um, other sources of traffic like your email or Facebook or something. It's just another spot where you can hold information. And now to the creative format. This is one I'm really excited about because we have the, it's all about the creative. So you have display, native, video, search. This is where you can put in um, with Facebook and those other ad platforms. Is it a carousel or is it this? Is it, you know, all those different types of doing those ads. We used to put those under content, but now we're able to separate that out and put that here. So it's really nice that we have that option. Um, and then finally, marketing tactic. This is another one that also used to kind of be inside content, um, but now we are able to pull that out. 
and put that in basically because it's all about the purpose. So for examples, could be remarketing, could be nurture, could be top of funnel, bottom of funnel, middle of funnel, those type of options inside the purpose for the marketing tactic. And again, we used to kind of put that stuff in content. You might still do that too, or you might see that sometimes, um, but marketing tactics is going to be the place where we put that going forward in the future. So another common question is, are they all required? So remember, we have all eight of these different options. And to answer the question, are they all required? No, it's actually only these three that are required. Now, of course, if you're using a different platform besides, besides Google Analytics, you might have to follow slightly different rules. But for Google Analytics 4, these are the three that are required. And so when you're building out your system, make sure that you have at least these three, as we did with our example in the beginning. All right, so how do you use UTM strategically? Instead of just kind of guessing, You, I'm sure you want to know how to use them with a system so you can really understand the whole story of what your traffic is telling you. Well, this is actually a screenshot from one of our tools inside the Measurement Marketing Academy inside the toolbox. So for those of you that are toolbox members and academy members, you have access to this. Um, so this is showing us that the Campaign. So remember, we had our source, our medium, and our campaign. And campaign is the product or service. And so in this case, academy. And then the source is Infusionsoft. The medium is email. And what we're able to really see uh, is understand the story of that, you know, that academy that we're sending traffic uh, with a purpose, the, excuse me, not the purpose, for the product of academy. And then we're able to see what the subject line was and where the content, like where it actually was in the email. So we're able to kind of understand that story. But here's where the magic really, really happens. So let's say we have two different sources, um, two different brands sending traffic, and there's two different types of traffic sending traffic, meaning the medium that where it's email or share. And so now we're really able to understand which traffic is doing what and be able to tell that story to understand if Facebook is getting users to buy the Academy or is it an email from Infusionsoft, you know, getting to buy the traffic. And then finally, here's another way of seeing this structure really become useful and tell the story. As you can see, there are two different Facebook uh, brands, sources that we have here. And then there's actually two different types of traffic. One is paid and one is share. And so because we have this system and we're not asking and telling Facebook, okay, if it's CPC, we're going to call it Academy. And if it's share, we're going to call it the Measurement Marketing Academy. Uh, or and if it's email, we're going to call it MMA. Um, and because we're creating the system where every single platform is using the same system, uh, we're able to really understand the story and compare these traffic sources very easily. And we'll show you how to do that in just a moment inside Google Analytics 4. But this is the behind the scenes, the secret of why you want a really good UTM structure and system so that you can understand the story that your traffic's telling you. So. As we mentioned, what do UTMs look like in GA4? So now we are ready to go take a peek in GA4. All right, so we are inside our reports, then we're under acquisition, then we are under traffic acquisition. So real quick, user acquisition and traffic acquisition. So think of traffic acquisition as the, the session where it's happening in one session and user could happen over the lifetime of the user, depending on your settings and stuff like that. So most of the time you're wanting to know traffic acquisition, it's gonna be a more useful truth. So we're gonna come here and we're going to choose session campaign, because we kind of go back to that structure, the image that we saw, how it's really useful to be able to see the different campaigns. And so here we have these different um, campaigns that we have set here. So here's a boot camp that we happen to have like in the a previous promo and we also have our academy um, and these other ones that we have as well. 
So, um, and here's a great example why having a lowercase all the time or else it's going to get fractured. But we actually fix this uh, when we go inside of Data Studio and start reporting. So our reports will show it as one, um, but just so you know that you can actually fix that. Um, we're going to go ahead and click on this plus button and then we're going to choose session acquisition and then we are going to choose source medium. And this is going to allow us to see the different source mediums um, against the different campaigns. And it's gonna take just a moment to load. Perfect. And so now we can very easily see the different camp uh, source mediums, remember the different brands and types against the different product or services. And we're able to compare those. And if we wanted to just see Academy, and if we spell it right, we would be able to break it down and see only those that have a session of campaign with the Academy. And then we could see all the different source mediums with these. Now, remember how we can compare different which one's doing what, make you know the results and how, as we referred to it earlier. You can come over here and if you have your different, what we call our ACE results, where if you're there aware, they complete, or they engaged, if you uh, follow our method, you would be able to choose one of these. Again, it takes a moment for it to load, but then we'd be able to easily compare which traffic source medium is doing uh, causing the results for what it is that we're looking for. So right now we're looking at the engage, but look, what if we wanted to know who's completing, meaning in this case it means purchasing. And so we're going to give it a moment and now we're able to see, okay, it's actually YouTube social. That's really surprising for us because um, it kind of figured it would be email doing a little bit more of the heavy lifting instead of YouTube social. So that's kind of fun um, to note that. So that is how you can use um, the very common source meeting campaign inside Google Analytics 4. So you can really understand the traffic story of what it's telling you and then tie it to the results. Um, as you can, we see with your ACE results, aware, complete, and engage with those. And you can really see which traffic source is doing what. If, if, in, if YouTube is really tr to get users um, possibly aware, then it's going. we're going to be able to really see, is it doing its job the way it's supposed to? And then if email is get, supposed to get users to buy, we're able to see, well, that one's actually not doing the job it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and optimize there. So it's really helping us tell that story there. All right, and one final thing, I'm going to give you a couple of pro tips. So my absolute favorite tool when using UTMs, I'm actually going to come to our website here, and here is a Chrome extension. You probably have seen it in Toolbox Thursday if you're part of our Toolbox Thursday list for that and get those notifications. It's actually one of our most popular emails we send out. Um, it's called the obviously Google Analytics UTM Builder, and you're able to just put in the URL here, and you can come in and type in what you want your source, your medium, um, your campaign. You have your keyword, which is term, um, and then content, and then you have these other new ones uh, for GA4. And then you just copy the URL that you want. So if we wanted to put test, 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 and you have all this, it's really easy if you're using this for test traffic or just kind of wanting to see what it looks like, you copy the URL and then you could come in and paste. And so it has it all there for you. And the tool even allows you to um, have some presets or something like that which is really neat. Um, this is one of my favorite tools out there for just kind of practicing and seeing what they look like. Um, however, we also do have another tool for you. If you come into your Measure Marketing Academy, for those of you that are uh, Academy members, and go to your toolbox, and then we're going to the very bottom here in Traffic Tracking Toolkit UTM Builder, and we're going to choose this particular spreadsheet here. And what this is, is a tool that you can use and so you can build your system and guide your team so you can have your system for email traffic and then your system for CPC traffic and so, you know, Facebook share and affiliate. You can have all these different um, 
spreadsheets out here so each one of your team members can know, oh, we call it Academy, not Measurement Marketing Academy or MMA, um, or we call it Certification, not Measurement Marketing you know, certification or something like that. Um, and you can see it with lowercase and hyphens and all of this. So you can guide your team to use a, the same system. So no matter what platform you're on, Google Analytics is going to have a nice, clean story. So again, this is one of those free tools for the tool inside the Measurement Marketing Academy called, a, called the traffic tracking toolkit. I almost fumbled over that word, but traffic tracking toolkit. Um, and you have access to that one. Um, it's one of those tools you just put in your URL and then choose your different options. And then way over here, because we now we have these three, you're able to grab the link here and see exactly what it's supposed to look like. And so it's a really useful tool. It's one of our most popular tools we've had for years. Um, and so you have access to that as well. So that is UTMs. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, so th thank you, Julie Brady. If uh, you have questions on that, oops, something just happened to my monitor. There we go. Um, you can obviously reach Julie and ask an instructor support. She'll be able to uh, help you out there. So hopefully you picked up a couple of one things there. Remember in the framework, your UTMs are going to help you with your information because you want to make sure that the information is there. If you don't measure, if you don't use UTMs, you will not have the information collected to get answers to those questions. And of course, traffic, making sure that's part of the build setup is making sure that you are organized and structuring your UTMs so they play nicely to one another. And the, the things that most people mess up is campaign. They have UTM underscore campaign and they use a different campaign value for every single traffic source and you should not do that. So think about your campaigns in a more general way. Uh, and then you've got those other UTM uh, that have come out like marketing tactic and, and platform and all that stuff that you can use to build out some differentiation. All right, next week's workshop is how to set up e-commerce in GA4. It's a little bit beyond basics, right? So we're going to go in and give it into the Beyond Bakes episode. It's actually a uh, update to the one that we did in 2021 as well, because um, there was only so much you could do with e-commerce back then. It's changed ever so slightly for 2022. So we're going to do an update and uh, we're going to update the workshop and you'll see how to do e-commerce with GA4. Um, so if you want that, all you gotta do is subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, again, we're just about shy over 4,500, I believe at this point. So get in there. Thank you very much uh, for all the kind comments. And uh, we look forward to any suggestions you have on topics, things like that. Feel free to drop those in the comments as well. Now, the other way you can get these workshops, the Measurement Marketing Toolbox, it is free. It's a free version of our Academy program where you have access to the most recent Workshop Wednesday. You've got access to all these tools, including the tool uh, that Julie had shown you, the, the Traffic Tracking Toolkit, that spreadsheet. The book that I showed you is also part of that, the Traffic Story book. And there's a bunch of other stuff that's back there. So it's our way of giving back to you. The only thing we ask is that you use it. So if you are not using it in a 90-day window, we will ask you to uh, free up your account so we can give it to somebody else because um, we want to make sure that people back there are using it. And again, if you want to keep it, it's yours for free as long as you use it. Just log in every 90 days. You can keep it for as long as you want. We have no restrictions. We just ask that you use it. Again, measure.tip slash www to find more about that. Just a name and an email to create the login uh, and then you'll have access to all of those tools. And of course, the other way that you can participate if you are ready, if it makes sense and you really want to learn this stuff, use the Measure Marketing Academy to its full extent. Unlock all the win courses. Unlock uh, the Ask Instructor support. Uh, you know, there's so much that is back there um, as part of the Academy. Courses on all aspects of Google Analytics, Google Analytics 4, Universal Analytics, for those that are still trying to play catch up there. Uh, Google Tag Manager, the basics, beyond basics, right? So there's beginner courses, there's intermediate courses, there's more advanced courses back there. Um, it's made as a just-in-time learning platform. So your job is not go back and watch every single course because quite frankly, you're probably not ready for every single course. I barely am, and I've been doing this for a while. So instead, you just start off with the basics, get your basic foundations in place. You come back, go through the framework again, and then you'll pick up new techniques uh, that you can use from a measurement perspective and enhance your skills. The Measure Marketing Academy is there for you and comes with instructor support. So the ask instructor supports back there way beyond I lost my password kind of support. It's instructors who are doing this stuff every single day that will help you. you send over videos and screenshots to them. They send over videos and screenshots back. It's like having a consultant on call and it's part of the measurement marketing academy uh, to become a standard uh, member. Just go to measure.tips slash get academy to learn more about the current offers for the measurement marketing academy. And we look forward to having you back there soon. With that, we'll go ahead and bring this one to a close. This has been Getting started, the ABCs of using UTMs in GA4. Thanks again for watching this workshop, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.
All right, Vince, in Julie's original file, she actually made an edit. I showed her how to edit a little bit. Um, so she made an edit and that edit is, uh, she, she, hopefully you'll see it in her T-Rex file. There'll be an edit. That edit, she snipped out a piece where she accidentally showed um, a client name, which we do not want in there. So her MP4 should be fine, but I'll make sure the edit is also carries over um, into this as well. So um, anyway, let me know if you have any questions. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man.